Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, I'm absolutely delighted to be here today with you all. And I really like the way that you frame this in a very practical, um, you know, let's do some projects together, let's, let's get going, because otherwise, calm, you talk, it's all fascinating, and then we go away again and back to our rabbit holes. So, so this is fantastic. Um, I'm going to talk to you a bit about sustainable health care, what it is and how we might begin to achieve it. And I'm starting with a quote from a fairly recent review that uh, people at the King's Fund did for NIHR, which was prompted by some questions that we put to NIHR about five years ago about why isn't there more research going on in sustainable health care? How can we get that going? So the report was, you know, is, is actually very useful, I think, to look at if you're interested in this, this area. And, um, and in, in this quote, they've also included the, the sort of Brundtland definition of sustainability, which is that we need to be able to carry on doing these things um, for future generations. So very simple definition of sustainability. What does that mean for healthcare and where are we sort of starting from? Um, about five or six years ago, there, there is an NHS Sustainable Development Unit, so, and that now sits jointly between NHS England and Public Health England which is great, um, and six years ago they did a first, a baseline a footprint of, uh, of the NHS, which showed how far we've got to go to achieve our 80% target from the 1990 baseline. So we've got an awful long, um, long way to go down if we want to achieve that, which we are legally committed to. And the NHS was hoping to be excluded from the the legal commitments of the Climate Act um, in 2008, but actually was included, which is great for all of us because <laughs> needs to be there. Um, so this this is the, how the carbon footprint bakes breaks down, and actually I think everybody was really surprised by how it how this happened. So it, it's not we we don't have the issue that you know it's just the big buildings and uh, the direct energy use within those buildings that's the main issue. It's actually the supply chain. So it's the, health, it's the heart, heart of healthcare. It's the mainstream healthcare that goes on in those buildings, which is creating the big carbon footprint. Um, and that's important because most of the people who've been tasked with reducing carbon in, in healthcare over the years, over the last 20, 30 years, have been in the estates and energy departments of those big buildings. They haven't been the clinicians. Um, so this, this picture is really what got us going about six years ago, saying we need to get the clinicians involved, we need to get them owning their carbon footprint um, and being responsible for those resources being used, because otherwise they won't be able to do their job in 30 years' time. I'm sure lots of you are familiar with this, uh, this picture, which is... Um, Barton and Grant. Um, so it's, a, it's just a very simple way of saying, you know, people in their healthcare are at the centre of a lot of different things. So these are the wider determinants of health, or this is the ecosystem model. Um, and, and we sometimes, when I'm talking to clinicians, I will start off with a kidney, the middle of that, or an eye or something, because actually they focus down even more narrowly on a particular part of the body. Um, and it's our job to make them think more broadly again out to all of those determinants which affect people's health care um, in many ways. So one of the things that we've been working on in, in, in the research area within what we do is, is to try and figure out how we measure what's in your, I think it's in your strap line, environmental, social and economic impact. So what does that actually mean in health care and how do we measure it? And the triple bottom line is, is a, you know, it's, a, it's an old concept in some ways, but actually nobody's really thought about how to measure that within healthcare. So we've been making some attempts, we've written some papers about that, and, and again, I think this is an area where we'd love collaboration on, on, um, on trying to work further. So financial, we all know how to measure money, you know, that's what it's there for, it's to help us transact various things, but measuring environmental sustainability, we've got carbon as a proxy, we've got carbon equivalents, but... Um, there are, you know, there are rare metals that we need within healthcare. Um, there are things which Jane and, and Janet have been working on here, which are, are, you know, needed in the supply chain and very important, and actually take a lot of energy to uh, to create. So how do, how do we actually get that basket of environmental factors in there? Um, 
And then social sustainability is even harder. Um, I mean, it might include things as diverse as the labour rights of people making surgical instruments. Um, so that's a sort of fair trade type issue, uh, down to staff morale, patient experience, and how you put all of those things together in one bundle and actually try and put a value on it is something that um, well, I'd love to hear your, your views on, and we need to work on. Um, this is just to say that um, if, if we were ever in doubt that people thought this was an, a, a legitimate thing for healthcare to be thinking about, then this, this poll that was done a couple of years ago illustrates that the public is actually very supportive of including sustainability. And then I, I, again, I know that Jane and Janet are doing some work with nurses across Europe looking at um, whether they think sustainability is an important element of, of their training. And this is the public in general, 92% um, of them thinking it's more important for the NHS to work sustainably. And actually a lot of them would be willing to spend more money, a third of them would be willing to spend more money if it, if it meant that things were more sustainable. But as we know, it's not usually more money. Um, it usually actually saves quite a lot of money, and the potential savings, we, work, we wrote this paper in the BMJ last year, um, which added up the case studies that had been done. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about our fellowships in a minute, but the case studies that came out of that amounted to savings of £7 million and this many 11,000 tonnes of CO2. Um, and, and that's important to show people because I think a lot of pe people still think about sustainability as a, as a sort of nice to have add on thing which is probably going to cost more so it's a bit like organic veg and actually most of these things are on you know really in that sweet spot of, of saving uh, money as well as saving environmental resources so we this is our attempt about Oh, how many, where was it? 2010, so four years ago now, to produce um, a, a kind of graphic or an understanding of what is sustainable healthcare. And we started from the premise that we, we need to reduce that carbon, but we don't want to reduce health. We don't want to get to that point where we actually start having to compromise health and healthcare. So we can either stop doing some things, reducing activity, or we can reduce the carbon intensity of the things that we do. Um, in order to stop activity or reduce activity, there are these three elements of, of um, you know, the healthcare pathway. One is prevention, so we keep people healthy, obviously, so that's the health and well-being bit, that's the, you know, the wider determinants to some extent. Um, secondly, we think it's really important that the patients are right at the centre of, of, um, of, the, of the care pathway, because then the third thing, which is the lean pathways, is more likely to happen, so that everything is done within that pathway is to the benefit of the patient and for, for added value to the patient. So that might mean reassessing things which have built, I always think of an oxbow lake, you know, that a river meanders and, and you, you get these kind of curves developing over time because of, you know, people and things and history and events. And actually, if you're trying to get from A to B, it's sometimes worth thinking, sorry, this is not a plea for <laughs> cutting, out, cutting out meanders, but um, it's, it's just saying you need to reassess. You need to be a bit Roman about it and say, where am I trying to get to? What's the quickest way of getting there? And maybe I don't need to do 15 blood tests, actually, on this patient. Maybe that's just built up over time and is, is from a previous government's um, worries about something else. So it's about reassessing making sure that everything um, adds value to the patient. And then there's the, the two ways of reducing carbon intensity. One is that we have alternatives for some things, and that might be stuff like telemedicine, it might be a new kind of syringe which is less carbon intensive or smaller or thinner. It's a bit like thinner wine bottles, um, you know, that, that kind of idea. So it's easy things which you can do without changing the actual care. And then there's the estates, and this is where most of the effort is going at the moment into the estates. Um, but we're kind of making a plea for including a lot more in all of the other areas. So we work um, via fellowship programmes, um, and this is just to give you a quick run through. I won't, I won't dwell on all of this here because it's written down and you can see it on our website. Um, but these are some of the things that we're trying to do and that we would love to work with more of you on. We've developed this specialty fellowship model which is taking somebody out of clinical care, working with them, they write some research papers, uh, we create a network within that specialty. So we started that in nephrology in 2008 and we've developed it in respiratory medicine and also in, um, in mental health, we've got a mental health fellow at the moment. 
and papers have come out of that. We have an awards scheme which gets everyone excited. Um, and we have really good support from people who are high up um, in the healthcare system. So great outputs, great outcomes, cash savings and, and patient benefits and so on. Um, and these are the areas that we would like to work on with you in terms of research. And some of these have been touched on by Tim, but they're about, you know, they're about working on the borders, really, about how we, how we work together across different disciplines and how we start to measure things that's useful. So we can help in these ways. Um, please do come and work with us. We'll work with you. Uh, we've got lots, lots of partnerships with, um, with universities already, and we've got a great team. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you.